What's going on guys? Welcome back to episode 118 of the Offshore Games cast. My name is Dave. That is uh I'm Dylan and that is a great energetic way to, <laughs> to I'm ever... Lyle. There we go. Hello. <laughs> I just Dave, made a football ex- reference, so Dave is all out of it now. Yeah. No, I'm already out of it, and there's a reason to be dry, and that's because we're talking about sand again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're back Wow, in the I didn't even realize, but you are very, very... Tr- that's very, very true. Today, we'll be talking about Assassin's Creed Dune. <laughs> Yeah. How, how does it compare to Final Fantasy 16 Dune or Atlas Fallen Dune? More sand. There's nice. even but more would, sand. Wouldn't Origin be the ultimate Assassin's Creed sand game? Do you Ult- think so? The yeah. ultimate, yeah. Yeah. Because overall, this map is much smaller, but most of it is still sand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no pyramids to slide down either, so it's not. That's not that fun. Oh. That but, was cool. But that's what we'll be talking about today. Uh, next week, uh, we'll be looking at Lyle, and she'll yeah, be talking me. about. What are you? What are you talking? Yeah, you about? just look at me for a whole episode. Well, like yeah. Forty-five minutes. You will just sit there looking at me. There's no gameplay yeah. in that episode. It's yeah. just Lyle. Exactly. It's just me. <laughs> no, we're talking about Cuckoo. <laughs> that's a really good game. It is. Dylan, you gonna play it? I want to. You're gonna. And then we'll carve out an extra week for Dylan, and then he can play Cocoon. Yeah, we'll use, we'll use all the all of daylight savings time for Dylan. <laughs> we'll bind we'll bind it together into a spirit yeah. Can bomb I borrow your daylight Dylan saving time just to play Cocoon? Sure. Yeah. Oh, thanks, guys. Uh, you... November sixteenth. Good job. Super Mario Brothers Wonder. I'm very much enjoying that. I want to play that too. It's good. It's hard. But it's good. I'm curious because you're the Mario guy, and if you say it's hard, I'm curious. Well, it's hard if you're collecting everything like I am, because I can't play mm. a Mario game and not collect everything. And Captain some of those Toad levels, Treasure especially Tracker. like the the bonus ones, eh, that guy's in there. Yeah, I bet. And it does it does do a thing. You will get there in a couple of weeks. It does a thing you won't like. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> uh, well, while we got you here, though, before we talk about sand and more sand. Please leave a rating or a review, no matter where you are watching us or listening to us on all podcast platforms or YouTube. You could be at the beach right now. You you could be. That's not really what I meant, but you you could be, no matter where you are. You could be in sand. Definitely not what you should be doing at the back of an ambulance, whether you are the victim or the paramedic. You but but you know yeah. appreciate the respect. If yeah, if there's an emergency, don't listen to us. If there's an emergency, dial nine one one. If they unless uh, maybe well unless it's a sand emergency, I feel like Dave is an expert on sand at this point. I got it everywhere. Much much like Anakin <laughs> Skywalker. Dave is Anakin Skywalker. I've, I've always I've, said that. By the end of all these sand games, I feel like I definitely have the low ground. <laughs> I feel like I'm Dune. <laughs> if you're watching us on YouTube, you can see our faces. And most of the time, gameplay. There won't be any gameplay for this episode, but most of the time. Uh, and and leave a little comment. We like Dylan can just loop all the um, trailers. Can you just find royalty free pictures over and over and over. of sand and like waves <laughs> on like the beach, or just like videos of the beach and like little just birds like walking stock by? Footage of sand. It's like yeah. all the lines still in there and stock written all over it. Yeah, Shutterstock and then just yeah. pictures of sand. That'd be perfect, perfect for this episode. I think it's a perfect representation. All right, let's get into the nitty gritty, dirty, sandy details. There's sand. That in is our very logo. coarse and dry. It is very coarse and dry. And you know what? It This might be a scratchy one to listen to. But this game was developed by Ubisoft Bordeaux and Montreal. Bordeaux is more so a support studio that have worked on a lot of the Assassin's Creed games in the past, but Montreal lastly headed Valhalla, which initially this game was supposed to be a DLC add-on for Valhalla, but they were like, no, it's too good. It's all right. Well, maybe we didn't have a game to put out, so... We have to have our yearly release, even when, what was it, um... 
one of the Assassin's Creed was Assassin's Creed Odyssey came out. They didn't have a yearly release for the next year, so they packaged in a remaster uh, of Assassin's Creed Three as the season pass, and that came out in its place of like the next year release in between. Was it, was it Origins supposed to be the start of like we're not doing yearly releases anymore? Thanks. Well, yeah, but they have to have a release. Oh, just what Ubisoft in general? <laughs> for Assassin's Creed, they have to have something. I find uh, it funny having these little. I find it funny having these little DLC baby games because I feel like I want to keep them on a shelf all to their own because I think of Uncharted Lost Legacy, you know, Wolfenstein, um, Old, Old, Old Blood, I think. Um, now we have Assassin's, Assassin's Creed Mirage. Uh, there's just so many little baby games and I find them fun. But this is a full-fledged... It is. I am a baby as well. Editor Al would love for me to wear diapers whenever new releases come out. <laughs> um believe Dave it or not is, he has a reputation of wearing diapers absolutely especially when borderlands 3 came out i needed to stay up all night long i can't go to the bathroom what am i gonna do facetime the tv believe it or not this game was published <laughs> by ubisoft how the fuck am i supposed to make a transition from this shit <laughs> <laughs> the game was published by ubisoft Who, it, ubisoft as a company the building is wearing a giant diaper they should be they need a lot of protection from a lot of their issues right now again how I do we make a... wait oh. for skull and bones oh, yeah, it got delayed again <laughs> yeah I sent... every time it gets del... <laughs> every time it gets delayed i send the post to dylan immediately as soon as i see it <laughs> like it, it, it feels like you i'm are a bit obsessed it. with the game though i think that's funny there is a toxic obsession i do have with it my hatred is, is absolutely overwhelming you're the reason they're keeping it going. <laughs> this, it's I just think, fueled by your hate at this point. I ripped my I ripped my mask off, and the Singapore government is there. <laughs> it's just the whole government. The they entirety all start of it. Out. Um, transition. Uh, the release date for Assassin's Creed Mirage was October fifth, twenty twenty three. So not too too long ago, and it came out on the PlayStation Four, PlayStation Five, Xbox Series X and S. Xbox One, and PC. As I've said before, it was originally going to be a fun little DLC game, uh, but, you know, it kind of got a little too big. The entirety of it does run in the Valhalla engine and has a lot of similar features coming over. The combat has been altered a slight tad. Uh, I mean, a big focus is just having the game be... Uh, representation of an original Assassin's Creed game again, more so akin to the first th like five or so, at, like around Assassin's Creed 3. So having like five people surround you and then you parry them over and over and over again? So that's what they try to do with the combat and I'll talk about it quickly here before we get more into it, but it's a, trying to be a mix of like dodge and parry Souls-like combat, but also a mix of you could just stand, like you have the the move set of like a a quick like a less attack and a powerful attack of like a souls game and a dodge and a parry of like general combat with smaller elite enemies and like bosses but in general enemies when they're doing those moves you do have a counter icon that does pop up above in a directional uh, arrow where in the original assassin's creed games you could just stand there wait and mm -hmm. counter every single one it's still something you can do. They make it a little more complicated, and the combat system is definitely something left to be desired overall. Um, but it, it's definitely trying to bring back that original feel, even in even in the combat. Um, let's see. The story is interesting, and then I feel like it kind of falls off to a point. As, as with most of the Assassin's Creed games, they start off with a modern day protagonist speaking or something happening just to give you like a little extra, a little remembrance of like what's going on, which I my drop that. I don't. I think that's absolutely underutilized and it needs to be a focus. It needs to be much more of a well, focus. I, I think. Well, OK, they can make it a focus if they do it good, but they haven't done it good for so long that it's just like just stop don't <laughs> it's, it's better to not do it at all than to do it poorly 
I, I understand that this was originally a DLC and like that might have not been the focus too, but the fact that this ended up becoming a full fledged game where it and it doesn't have besides an opening cutscene of a of William talking, it doesn't have any modern day segments at all. I find that to be very frustrating because I that's something I do want to know more about, and I think they fucked up in Assassin's Creed three and they haven't been able to recover. Exactly. So they should just drop it. I think they need to start fully fresh. And I know with uh, reboot like, the se- I'm fine with that. They're they're already technically rebooting the series. It's going to be a little evolution of what Origins started, but it's going to still be a continuation of Origins style. But I think they are rebooting it fully in a way after Valhalla now. But like, especially like what I find the most frustrating is because the way that Valhalla left off with Basm now being the modern day protagonist. All this is, is just his backstory, which is interesting if you care about him. But in, even in Valhalla, he was a very bland character. There wasn't much to him. I feel like in Valhalla, you end up like disliking him. Yeah. He betray just like everyone. But that's kind of what you see in this game. You see his lead up to becoming someone who doesn't follow all the rules and like only goes his true heart based off the things that have been given to him. Like the rules that he's instilled over time based on the creed and the hidden ones that he's kind of manipulated to what he truly believes is right. It's fine, but he's not a character necessarily that's super depth wise like he doesn't have a lot to him and he's not super interesting in the first place he's just kind of there and now he's the main focus and to have him at the end of valhalla be the new main modern day protagonist and it's kind of like there's very little focus on the animus or anything like that at all like all you hear like you see like william talking and there's like the background of just things digital stuff going on but there's no talk of anyone being in an animus or doing anything you're just kind of doing it like i find it so frustrating i want more modern day i don't know when or if we'll ever get a full modern day game which i would love oh i think that that had to happen like and like like, with desmond back in the original games i think at this point unless unless you're doing a hard reboot of everything i know i just can't I would love it. It would be so fun if they did it right. It like, and I know you're in that area. I know a hundred percent that they would just do a crossover with Watch Dogs too, and just say that oh, that's yeah. like something. Yes, because it's would. all in the same universe, which is oh fucking whatever. What's what's the uh, the uh, the what's that fucking the race or or whatever the fuck Ubisoft does? The crew. The crew. Yeah. Yeah, the new one came Is that out. That also the in the in the, in the same universe. I yeah, so. they're all all their games are pretty much in the same universe. We all we and know then, for a fact that Watch Dogs, Assassin's Creed, and Far Cry take place in the same universe. And then you have um, Skull a, and the assassin a, assassin infiltrating the crazy car party and just killing everyone. So we don't have to endure the cringe. Yes, uh, dialogue anymore. Where does really Rayman silly. fit into all this? That's really good. That's that's when uh, in Far Cry when you take too many drugs. Is that is that's that all just Rayman? so just far like... into the future we don't know yet. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. things have taken over because apparently if the Rayman and fucking the Rabbids are all together, and then Mario and the Rabbids are together, then oh, Mario God, and Assassin's yeah, that's, Creed. That's weird. Are we going to see, like, Ezio come back and, like, put a hit out on Luigi? <laughs> and have to, like, Im- the whole game is, like, it's not Bowser. Luigi's been taken by Ezio Auditore. <laughs> we got to get be, him back. He's going to be in Smash Bros. He's taking too. him to Firenze. Mario, must, you must go to Italy. You must go home. <laughs> I'm imagining playing, like, a, a, a Mario game where he's doing his all, like, you know, his triple jumps, his wahoos, but it ends it's with him just assassinating someone with a hidden blade. That would be <laughs> sick. He's, he's not going like through green was. pipes. He's going through like the sewage systems of Italy, like <laughs> in the olden days. That'd be perfect. I'm down for this crossover. He's collecting like little coins, not like golden coins, but like to pay to so he can eat and get more mushrooms and just do hard drugs to be able to go and <laughs> save his brother from the assassins. <laughs> oh, I love this. And then he ends up 
and Draymond with the rabbits. Mm -hmm. I also yeah, can we it, talk about how shrooms. I want to talk about how pretentious game studios have gotten with their like Netflix style like title card openings. It takes an hour of gameplay before you see a title card that only says a Ubisoft original. I don't mind that, to be honest. It takes another entire hour almost to see Assassin's Creed Mirage. <laughs> that is a little pretentious, but I don't <laughs> I, I don't have anything against that. <laughs> Like, I remember playing but in both a set. Like, I, I think they do it in a cool way, especially if you're, uh, like, trying to do everything, which I like to do in these games. In both Valhalla and Odyssey, you start off on an island that takes roughly five-ish hours. And once you leave those, like, sections and go into the full game, that's when you see the title card. So you don't see it till like, five hours in almost if you're really doing a lot of stuff. But especially just seeing a Ubisoft original and then just continuing to play through a cutscene and then gameplay and then an hour later, it just was, like, Really? That feels like they're 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 Desperate? they're doing a parody of themselves. I the don't think they are capable. I don't think they've reached that <laughs> no, stage yet. I, to be no, honest, no, I don't think so. There's way too much ego going on in that company. Um, I, I mean, also want to say so many studios. I they they don't know each other. So no, they're probably people who've never met who have made the same game. There definitely are one hundred percent. I also want to say besides that pretentiousness, there's also an extreme laziness of writing again because I don't know how many Assassin's Creed games now have put up a random cult of masked fuckers who mean absolutely nothing to me because it's the same shit over and over and over. Here's a list of 12, 5, 8 masked cultists who are being naughty. I mean, Boom. that is very, very reminiscent of the first game, though. It is, but like I think you can do something better. I I, yeah, I also mean, Assassin's Creed Two did something better, so yes, it can, can be done. It can be done because we've done it so many fucking times now. I think it's time to drop this whole just looking at your your doc, the whole like the pieces of Eden and all that shit. Like I'm just I don't know. Maybe I'm just kind of over the Assassin's Creed bullshit and just want like the. The, I mean, the period been, games that they I that think most people have been over it since Assassin's Creed 3 <laughs> ever, every it's, time yeah. they ever, ever since Creed. Desmond left everyone yeah. was Pretty like much, okay yeah. let's just drop that now let's just play a game but mm -hmm. they still insist on doing it yes <laughs> without that ever culminating in something because it yeah. can because they then they would have to set up something in the modern world and they won't <laughs> no they won't <laughs> and we already have four other Assassin's Creed games in the works. Still, none of them really having to do with modern day. One of them's just sort of gimmicky and being VR, which I'm honestly really excited for. <laughs> I love the, I, I love the formula. And it's like, I, I, I was going to say, it's about every single time an Assassin's Creed game comes out, all what you really need to do to understand it is go to YouTube and watch a new video that updated from the last game of the entire timeline. And at this point, it's getting to about two hours. Yeah, I remember like, a couple years ago, it was about an hour, an hour, 20 minutes. But at this point with the games and the lore, you're getting close to two hours of watching and understanding of the entire, the Isu, the first civilization, the gods, the pieces of Eden, all the yeah. assassins, the animus, the Templars, the fucking Abstergo, all of it in order to, un Layla, Desmond, Rebecca, Ben, all these people just to understand everything that's going on here. It's insane. But the thing is, you don't have to, and that's kind of. But that's also the problem: is that they're making yeah, the games so that you don't. Yes, that you don't have to, and it's not cohesive, and they need to co co hi co hide it. Co was it co in? Was it in Valhalla, where you're in like the computer or something, and you're talking to maybe Desmond as for like a. Like a quick second like you talk to him again maybe no, 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 no there's like a giant blue figure and you're talking to him and it's like supposedly desmond in the ai or some shit yeah he's stuck at, well it, back in assassin's creed revelations or in assassin's creed 3 he he switched places with subject 17 who was stuck in the animus 
that exactly there's so much shit as this they were do, testing the animus on certain subjects and subject 17 was stuck in the animus like his brain and his consciousness was stuck in there and desmond ended up switching places with him at one point to like f- try to free him but i thought desmond was jesus yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's something like that I, descended just, from god let's, or... let's drop this we There's have issues so much lore we do have issues and i think ubisoft has issues too that's why <laughs> they can't bring it together all right so let's bring it well, let's let's bring it back yeah let's um, talk about passive. so it's another lazy written game and we're set in <laughs> baghdad in uh, 861 ce in the chronology of assassin's creed this takes this is the third game because it goes origins odyssey then this then valhalla as, as like the earliest um you, you we start off with a young young basm he's a little petty thief with his friend nihal she's they're both little thieves they're running around doing little jobs just to make money and get scraps to eat and, you know, they find out that some of the jobs that they're doing are for, you know, the hidden ones. Because this is before they're assassins and everything. Um, uh, I, you know, my now my brain is just going back to how uh, mad I am at the series sometimes. <laughs> because they just, they, they could do so much cool shit with the assassins. And with both Odyssey and Valhalla, it's just the assassins. And even with, they're just kind of like, hey, you kind of, literally with Valhalla, they're like, you seem kind of cool. Have our gear. And then he's just like, Arkaduk! and then he's running around just pretending to be an assassin. Like, it just feels stupid. But at the same time, I really like that game. But like, ugh, I'm sorry. I'm going so off track with my brain. So he becomes, he's, does, he's doing these little jobs for the hidden ones. And he's going up to the leader and he's basically grabbing him by the cuff of the shirt. Her name is Roshan. And he's like, fucking let me join. I want to be you so bad. Yes, Lyle. I just want to say that I love the voice actress for her. Uh, Shora yeah. Ag shall do. I love her. She's she's, she's just in the wanted... expanse. She's just, in the expanse. Yeah. She plays Christian Avasarala. She is. She's also in Destiny. Uh, she also was in Mass Effect. But yes. I just love her, and I, I just want that to be on record. <laughs> is she in Andromeda or in three? No, no. She. I think it's it's either two or three. She's on the Council of Tali's people who want to, that makes sense. Like, exile her i think that absolutely makes sense yeah her voice like once you know it's her incredible. it's so it's iconic so... yes yeah. go on sorry so that's roshan uh basically just grabbing her and just being like wanting to join and she's like nah at the same time there's this big delivery being delivered to the caliphate which if i gather correctly there's numerous caliphates and they're basically like the jarls around baghdad they kind of just control okay. each of the territories. I think that's kind of what I picked up from there. But they were getting this delivery, and it just so happened to be a piece of Eden, which I don't think they indirectly call it anything. You know, like there's the apple, the staff, and whatnot. It it's a disc with like a hole in the middle. Like it's a I I'm gonna call it the Maybe disc like of Eden. I assume Black Sabbath or something. It's like a golden. It looks kind of like a record in a way. It's sick. But that that's that and. You touch it, and uh, after <laughs> you touch it, you just touch it. Uh, he he ends up defying the orders and goes out to the caliphate to try to retrieve this and prove his worth to the hidden ones. Um, and he touches it, uh, and you know he sees this hologram of two people, and he doesn't he doesn't get it. He's like, "What the fuck was that? This is eight sixty one CE. What the fuck was that?" It's like showing a pilgrim fucking Teletubbies. Um, oh, God. I don't think they'd handle that well. Not at all. Why do they have pictures on their stomachs? Um, uh, <laughs> um, in, in, in the hectic uh, happenings of touching this disc, Nihal freaks out and kills the caliphate. And Basm's like, why the fuck would you do that? And he's like, I never want to see you ever again in my entire life. Uh, and then he leaves. Um, he takes the disc and he... So, so, uh, <laughs> as he touches, touches a disc. Basm touches a disc. Hologram pops out. Basm freaks out. 
Caliphate comes over, puts him in a headlock up against a pillar. Got him up against there, choking him out. Nihal comes up, saves Basim's life. Basim freaks out again as of the ramifications of killing the Jarl of Whiterun. And then all of a sudden, fucking disowns her completely. Poor Nihal. Yeah. She's probably evil by the end of the game. We can get into spoiler territory. No, no, no. Right it's, off the it's bat. Fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Go on. I'm I'm glad to get into spoiler territory. Oh, no, 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 go on. Like the story. Yeah, <laughs> go on. Like, that's why I said, I think the game was okay. I think, I like, I don't think it was bad. I don't think it was amazing. But I think it was a, a fun little entry. Um... So he overreacts, blah, blah, blah. There's the, he leaves and he brings the disc to Roshan. And then boom, begins his m- montage of him training to become a hidden one. It takes like two months, a couple months. Does it, does it play Eye of the Tiger? That's, that's what my brain was envisioning the entire time. Because it was just really silly and, and whatnot. But I, like <clears throat> completely expected to, to go through your little routine of training. You know, there's the whole like, you're doing your your leap of faith. Oh, you're not ready yet. Your body tensed up at the last moment. You got to let your mind be free. You know, like shit like that. But, I mean, you know. Ezio could do it in like two minutes. So it seems already a mm-hmm. an idiot for that. Yeah, there's some Bad there's some suck. cute moments that do pop out in the game as like little nods to Valhalla. Um, at one point you come across this little side quest where you're helping this kid and like trying to escape and he's somewhere up high and you help him do a leap of faith because he had, we, you both have to get down and he does it in like a second, like without thinking and he does it perfectly. And Basim's like, you know, talk to me when you're older. Like, I'm not going to train you now, but talk to me when you're older. And that's Hytham, who is his partner in Valhalla when he comes over to meet up with uh, Eivor, which I think was really cute and cool to have, like, that little Does blend. It, that dude die in Valhalla? And Basim's just like, uh, he knew what he was up signing up for. Yeah. Yeah. So Basim, as when this other guy was a kid. Basim like, has a very traditional... He's got a very traditional, like, survivalist, like, well, fuck you, <laughs> you're not good enough. But, you know, there's that. So, from there, you are tasked with going around in traditional Assassin's Creed style of doing investigations. The entire main mission is set out in, like, a spider web of investigations stemming from the different Assassin's Creed guilds that are set up around Baghdad, each with different missions and stuff that you have to do to complete before you can find enough uh, information to go and take out one of the head people because you got to figure out who each of these cultists are, so you'd have to go and eavesdrop, you have to go and find letters, help out people, just collect information to take out every single one of them. Um, and from there, you're kind of off playing the game. Any questions, class? No. That's, woohoo is not a question. No, it's not. (laughs) But it is appreciated. You're welcome. (laughs) In just about every Assassin's Creed game, class, uh, but especially in this one, pickpocketing is a very very big focus you will be doing it for missions you will be doing it for resources you will be doing it for items to sell many many different things uh will have you be pickpocketing at one point or another um it comes along with a little mini game where you have to walk up behind somebody you'll be able to use your eagle vision which i think is uh left or right on the d-pad uh to be able to see who has these glowing bags on their waist you walk up behind them you press y and this diamond pops up depending on what they have on them it'll have different levels of almost difficulty if they have like a couple of durhams which are the coins the currency you might just be able to walk up press y and not even have the option for this little mini game and just take it and walk away 
if they have a couple items or something nice that you could sell, this little diamond will pop up and you'll have a bigger diamond that'll start to shrink and you have to click Y again when it's inside the other diamond to successfully take it. If not, they'll notice guards can be alerted and chased down. If you do have your notoriety get up too high, one of the most annoying shits from Assassin's Creed Odyssey returns with the special elite enemies that come mm. out and find you. They're not, I don't think, as bad. I mean, there's many ways to take down your notoriety in this game, but I fucking hated those things in Odyssey. And they're still not fun, especially when you're in the middle of a fight already and they just kind of pop up. Uh, and, and especially with the, the combat being more limited and not as um, open to, to, to get around to many things, it can, it can get frustrating at times. Uh, the other big aspect of the par is the parkour, which still kind of sucks. It <laughs> doesn't really feel amazing. They don't fully know what they're doing yet. You still get stuck on shit. It still doesn't do what you want it to do a lot of the time, especially when you're running from enemies. There's many things to get stuck on. There's many things for that you should fucking be able to jump to that you can't. <laughs> That has been a problem ever since the first game, so mm -hmm. they it's, never got that under control. No, like, I remember back in Unity, they really tried to make it smooth and have, like, routes set up, and they tried to do the same thing here, but it still feels chunky. It doesn't feel amazing, which is also frustrating. Um, I would think with a smaller, like, more handcrafted sort of thing, it would be better. Especially yeah. after they switched to, like, origins open world style that was more like climb everything yeah this is just a smaller focus section with a couple map segments of like a, a big town and then a bigger section of wilderness that surrounds it in the shape of a banana is that the artifact no a disc and a banana a disc and a banana i can't wait for the banana i've eaten we have the apple already yeah why apples because Bible. Because Bible. All right, but why didn't the Bible people say banana instead of apple? Because God. What's God's problem with bananas then? I don't know. He fucking planted an apple tree and there was a snake and some shit. And the snake's like, eat the apple. And Eve's like, I'm kind of hungry. <laughs> and Adam's like, you bitch! There it I is. I gave you a rib. I gave Did a rib. Have did they have bananas when that was written? Probably surely, not, right? Surely. Probably. No, surely. Not, not like 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago. There were bananas. When existed. did bananas happen? In the Middle East? When were bananas invented? <laughs> they originated up to 10,000 years ago. And it's some where? scientists believe they may have been the world's first fruit. Boom. Where? Well, this is from the Australian Banana Growers Council. <laughs> <laughs> Propaganda. Okay, here we go. Where do bananas come uh, from? Mama and dad New bananas. Guinea. I love that we're going on a banana tangent now. That's amazing. You got to be careful. It's a there was a banana slope. plague in the 1950s. That's a little late. <laughs> That's oh, around the time of the Cuban Missile Crisis. <laughs> Ancient origins to the 1800s. Well, that's a lot more recent than 10,000 years ago. I yeah, I feel like that. I just feel like bananas are, are like a fruit that probably originated around the equator. So I don't, I just don't know if they had them in the Middle East. That's all I wanted. To know. Okay. Are where uh, Middle East bananas when? <laughs> uh, they first probably arrived in the Middle East around 700 AD. Okay, this game takes place uh, 861 Common Era, which is about 160 years after that. This game is so, after so, that. So now we, so, so now we have the discussion of when was Genesis written. Sega Genesis. Yes. Genesis written when? 
1400 BCE. Before so, Common Era. That was before Christ. So that was like almost 2500 years before this game takes place. So pre And before bananas came into the mid uh, into the Middle East. So there you have your answer. That's why there's no banana in Genesis. But there is an That's Assassin's a... Creed Mirage. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just one big banana. It is. So they could have made a, a banana of Eden at one point <laughs> later. Hey, there's still time. That was, that later. was an amazing but they're all, tangent. All, uh, but they're all artifacts from the first civilization, which came before everything else. And they just had apples deal with it. Okay, just go apples. <laughs> all righty. <laughs> So a cute, fun little thing in the game. Are what the... sort of apple do you think it was? Like a red gala? A honey crisp? It's probably an ancient apple that does not look anything like an actual apple that we have today. I'm going to go green. Maybe I'm gonna it was go a green with... apple. No, it was definitely a red. I'm going to go with the Granny Smith. It's golden. Are you fucking blind? Oh, yeah. It is gold. <laughs> anyway, there's cats in this game. <laughs> Some of the cats... Well, you can pet all the cats, but some of them have little assassin little symbols on their noses, and they'll give you resources if you pet them. That's cute and fun. Ouch, did they brand the brand? No, it's in the fur. The, the fur is designed that way. Wait, now I feel like I have okay. questions. <laughs> did they, like, uh, like I, I don't know what the English word for it, breed them? Did they breed them that way? I don't know if it's what? canon. I don't Why? know. Is, so it's just, it, they it's naturally just, just had the logo in their nose. Yeah, it's like a diamond. It's like a the triangle logo. So is, but the assassin's logo already exists at this point. So how are cats born with that logo that have shit for you? Maybe they found the cats and they were like, oh, look at that. And then they strapped resources to them for other assassins to find. Oh, that's where they got the logo from. No, they, no. <laughs> so then how did the cats have the logo? <laughs> I think it was a coinky dink. And they strapped resources to it. Amazing. Go on. <laughs> so there's that. Um, like I said, you go back to traditional investigations and eavesdropping as you collect more stuff and you take out your first target, I believe. Uh, you go and you get to cut your finger off and you get hey. your, your hidden blade and you become a true hidden one. You're not an assassin. You're a hidden one. Of course. Because assassins aren't a thing yet. They're only What are ones. the Templars called? The Circle or something? <sighs> Some I don't know, in this game there's some fucky cult. I don't know. There's some shitheads. They're always okay. Templars or Abstergo to me. <clears throat> Let's see. The when hidden I, one's creed. When it comes to the notoriety, there's many, many things that you can do. So, like I said, if you get the notoriety too high, those annoying enemies will come and get you. Um, but you can go around and rip wanted posters down to remove notoriety. And you can mm. also, I think they're called, um, oh, what are they? The is it the Mundi? The Munadi. You pay this dude, uh, these people called Munadis, uh, to basically, um, they're like town criers. They're basically preaching your innocence to everybody, no matter what. And I had a, I had an achievement in, to use their services three times, and I'd already used it once, and I needed to do it two more times and in order to uh, obtain their services you need to get these special like tokens and you can get a lot of these tokens from pickpocketing people and this they use a merchant token which not only can remove like lower prices at merchants uh by a certain discount but you can use them for these guys so what i did was i started slaughtering every single person i saw in front Does of this movie not trying to kick you out of the animus when you do that it does say that it does that it does not sync up. Like you are gonna desync when you do that because it's like Basm didn't Basm wouldn't do this, but you know Basm needed to use his services for an achievement. So what I did was in front of this man, 
I started slaughtering every single person in front of me until I gained enough notoriety to be taken away. So I did that. So I went up to him. I paid him. And I said, I didn't do that. And he just started letting my dead bodies that you've just freshly murdered. So him in his terrified stance is letting everyone know that I didn't do that. The that problem... really, that really sounds like they are banking a lot of, uh, uh, well, they are banking a lot of, on nostalgia, aren't they? Because this is pretty much the same thing you do in AC one and two. Pretty much. But the problem is I needed to do it twice. So you just slaughtered them again? So just I just began slaughter? to slaughtering a second time. <laughs> and when I was done, I walked up to him and I said, I didn't do that either. <laughs> and I walked Amazing. away and I got my achievement. It was wonderful. Nice. It sounds wonderful. Um, there are other types of little tokens that you can get. There are power tokens and uh, there are some other ones that you can get to uh, use to pay different groups to do things. One of them is a group of just mercenaries to just go and cause distractions and start killing guards. And another one is just this small group of people that is for you to hide and blend in plain sight and just start like cruising your way down. You can pay them to get from like past like a checkpoint or something, a restricted section that you're not supposed to be in. Um, and then when you go for your big I mean, kill... Um, at least you have to pay them now because in the first game you could just walk into a group of monks and they would be like <laughs> yeah. well yeah. he's here now <laughs> they check their watch it's 2 30 oh hey <laughs> come on let's go when you do get down to killing your big uh assassination targets it's back to the classic feather to to collect the little blood sample to prove that you did take them out have the little moment of the cutscene where you have your conversation and you take out the feather whoop and you go do back do they still say basic shit all the time to you it's like more it's story related and like like why they did what they did and it's like you know their last words and shit and it's whatever so basic stuff pretty, pretty basic <laughs> so they're basic either, I'm assassin's creed so stuff sorry i didn't want to do it or they're uh, what would you have done it had to be done you'll never get us what i mean you you got me, but I <laughs> doubt you'll get the rest of us. That's at least, always the best one. At least maybe not today. It's kind of late. But, oh, is that the light? It's taking a while. <laughs> Give me one more behind the ear. Um, another thing that you can do is contracts. These are fun little, like, menial side quests that you could just pick up at your Assassin's Guild place um and just do random stuff you can get uh resources sometimes outfits and whatnot for completing them i feel like a lot of games are in it i'm just going to associate it with spider-man because it's fresh on my mind a lot of games are doing a lot of the outfit swaps just for fun and make them cool and every character's got to have suits and, and stuff and whatnot there is one outfit that I did get attached to. It had his nipple out the whole time. It's not why I chose it. I just wanted to state that fact. But it looked... It, it they, like that's why you chose it. It's not why I chose it, but I just wanted to state that. That for the sounds record. like the the outfit from Origins. He had his nipple out. It, it, was, it was a very Origins-esque, very sand-esque <laughs> outfit. Good, worthy just of the sand. Covered his body in sand except one nipple. And you know what? I, and I love to talk about this before, playing Spider-Man with Sandman as the first part. <laughs> How much sand am I going to get? Yeah, you can't escape the sand. Can't escape it's the sand. It's the of the sand for Dave. We'll, we'll talk about that in a couple weeks, though. Oh, well, let's move on to the abilities, because there's more to the combat. There's, there's a lot going on with Basm. Wait, you didn't tell us why you liked the outfit. Oh, it looked cool. Oh, <laughs> because it had a nipple out. That's what it's not why. You were like, like it's it. not why. It's because, but then we got caught up on the nipple. But then the whole thing was just it looks cool. And I threw some dye on it, so I, like I changed its color. I bought color changing, so I made it more sand looking. I made it more tan. <laughs> I thought you sand has taken over your life. Yeah, at he's, this, he's at gone. This point. <laughs> when I close my eyes, all I see is an hourglass. <laughs> It's my time's running out one grain at a time. 
Um, skills. You have abilities and skill points. Skills. There are three skill trees. Three skill trees. There's the phantom tree. Uh, that one focuses on your assassinations and sneaking, doing like, chain assassinations and whatnot, because you're a superhero sometimes. You can like freeze time for a second and target numerous people as long as you're not in combat by clicking the right stick. You have little focus bars that you can use. You can gain up to a couple of them and you can chain together numerous assassinations and like a flash sonic quick succession. Um, there's the trickster skill tree. That one's mainly used for adding items to your inventory, whether it be, you know, the health items or, you know, adding more tools that you can use to your belt and increasing the amount of tools that you can have. And, uh, there's the predator tree that focuses on your little hawk and kidu, uh, and their abilities when it comes to targeting enemies, which can be from a distance, scanning them, being able to just get you set up for your little exploration i don't there's there's no i don't think much attacking that uh enkidu can do and also uh around big settlements there are marksman enemies that if enkidu is flying around uh they will try to shoot shoot him down and then assholes can't, can't can't be called up into the sky until the marksmen are taken out uh when it comes to your tool belt and adding different tools to it there are six that you can add between throwing knives there's a torch that you can use there's smoke bombs traps um there are uh blow darts there's there's many different things for distracting and for killing there's firecrackers um they can all be upgraded with the resources that you acquire back at your base to not only give them a couple different extra abilities whether it be larger distance for their effect or uh you know add sleeping tips to your blow darts and you know maybe when you shoot an enemy with a blow dart and no one sees it their body fucking disappears and dissolves and no one will know that they're gone Where, what i could sounds or, sounds totally if logical I, if There's i were a, at work i would love if someone shot me with a sleep blow dart and then you just passed out for like 30 seconds and then you woke oh, back up only, and went oh, back that's to work. it you can increase the duration as one of the upgrades, but it's not long. You have to go up and kill them before they wake up. I was hoping it could be like, you know, for their sake, nap. they could just like nap on, on the job, but they have an excuse. I mean, don't, you probably don't have the physique of like, a... when when is this set again? Wait, 861 wait, wait. CE. 861 CE, so you probably will sleep for at least five minutes. It'll be a little bit. I, I think I'm built like the average 861 guard. Yeah. Are you? <laughs> Are yeah, you? I'm fucking ripped. Maybe in the head. Well, I just wanted to give you more <laughs> sleeping time. That's on you now. I just wanted blow, blow darts more were sleep. before daylight savings time. That's how they that's how they figured in the extra hour of sleep. <laughs> oh, that's okay. That explains everything. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's a few other things that you, as Basm can do, you can whistle to attract people and, and then they start walking over and they're like, Whoa, who, who did that? I thought I heard something. Hmm. It must be nothing. Well, like the same old shit that you expect. Yeah. You can hide in hay bales. You can hide in, in like bushes and, in, in like tall grass and call them over one at a time and spend like three minutes just. Yep. <laughs> Walk like two feet because you're out of range. Uh like just do that over and over and over. And then you take out your throwing knives and then you can do the thing where like you stab somebody and then you can chain throw a knife at somebody else. Um, you can collect a lot of resources from chests throughout the area to help increase uh, when it comes to your tools. Uh, you also have a little camel that you can ride. That's, that's, your, that's your mount. I will say the one big thing that this game does is it does not have any section where you're forced to pilot a ship at any point. That is the best thing about it. No, there they're saving it for skull and bones now. There's small boats that you can pilot in like a river, but there's not a massive ship that you have to do ship combat with. And that's, that's, that 
that made it this game gain a point for for not <laughs> a whole point a whole for point for not having ship combat. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes down to the collecting and the map icons of the game, there's a bunch of stuff. There's enigmas that are just kind of these notes and pictures strewn around the map that'll eventually, if you find them, they'll give you like a little riddle and can lead you to uh, a treasure. I never did any of them. I didn't care. I just wanted the enigma itself, not where it led to, because that's what got me the icon to like go up and finish the map zone. So that's all that mattered to me. Um, you have a, a buddy early on in the game, uh, Dervish. Uh, and he has artifacts that he wants that a lot of people have. And that's where the pickpo pickpocketing comes in with the, the mini game because it has a very thin area of, you know, being correct when you try to take one of his artifacts. There's only like 14 in the game. And they're strewn around the map. Um, but once you get those, uh, you get, I think, a special outfit so at the uh, end. So you're pickpocketing people for the artifacts to give them to this guy? Yeah. And these people just walk around with these highly valuable artifacts? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are they big or are they like coins? No, they're sometimes decent size, like, you know, two hands. And you're just stealing that from someone's back pocket? Yeah. And they don't realize Point it. and click adventure style. Well, maybe after a couple seconds, they'll go, huh? What? <laughs> huh? And then as you're walking away, they'll go, hey, my, my, my thing is gone. And then you just leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it. It's funny. Um, there's mysterious shards. That's for Nihal. Uh, I don't think I ever fully finished that like full quest line. But like one of the things for the map icons are these mysterious shards that are being carried by these special people. Always being walked around by with guards usually. But all you got to do is either kill them or just pickpocket the shard off of them. They're like special shards that have to do with um, uh, just Eden and just weird animus shit. Yep. Um, there's the synchronization points like in every game. Uh, just climb up to the high spot. Some of them are frustrating because they're all just the same tower spire copy and pasted a couple times that has like a, a one to two ways to climb up it and like I should be able to jump from here to there, but I got to go around this way and then up here and like kind of will snake my way up it. That is also very old school Assassin's mm -hmm. Creed. But like you can do it in a way that's still not tedious and frustrating. That feels. I like mean, you evolution. could also just use cool buildings for it. You don't have to do the tower thing. <laughs> you don't. Um, there's historical markers all over the map. There's dozens of them. They, they'll they give you little pieces of history for each of the locations that you're in and what happened there and what was going on during the time. Um, Tales of Baghdad are one to two kind of bigger side quests that pop up in each of the sections. Some of them are really cool, and I like doing them like you're helping a wife and, and doing this. And like they're just kind of more thought out side quests in a way of stuff that's going on uh and then there's the lost books there's this one dude in the library who just needs his books back you got to go get all the books and then i think you get an outfit at the end and i think i got all the books and i don't think i i don't know what happened there but i got them i got the bunch of books for him <sighs> The outfit is just a pair of glasses because you're a librarian now. That would be I would I would have taken that. That would have been cool. But it's in a, it's a it's the same old Ubisoft Assassin's Creed formula of just icons and shit all over the place, and then you can bring in Kidu out, and then you can see all those little lights shine up around the map to see where you want to do, like where you want to go next. Instead of having to open up the map, you can just do it from there, so it feels more immersive, and you're not like leaving the game. But it's the same old Ubisoft shit, which I can, I don't hate. I don't hate it. I I went through a phase of really hating that. And I've I've shifted a little bit towards if it's small a smaller scale game I can get on board with it, mm -hmm. but when it's like just so overpopulated, this huge map to the point where it's like you're spending hours upon hours doing the same few things. Yeah. That's when I kind of hit my point of like this is this is 
it's so unnecessary. Mm-hmm. But when it's like a small area, and even though it is still kind of like, oh, set a waypoint and go to the map icon. If it's a small area and it doesn't get too repetitive, I'm kind of like the 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 checklist part of my brain that likes completing things is on board with that. It, like that's... Ubisoft is definitely the yeah. mother of overloading yes, huge absolutely. maps with icons. One hundred percent. But that's exactly what my brain likes. I like going into a section of the town, like this one section that's curved here, and it's like there's two uh, shards, there's, you know, 18, his- like, historic markers, one sink point, you know, one lost book, collect all of these things, and, you know, that section is finished. I love that. It's my favorite thing. It makes me feel complete when I do that. And then I move on and do story stuff. Like, it feels so nice. Like, that one's done. I don't have to anymore. Like, it's good. I mean, I guess, like, I don't fully know the scale of this game. But I feel like this game, I could see myself like, okay, it's a small one. Yeah. I can do this one. It's very short. You don't have to do everything. If you were to just beeline it, you could probably beat this game in about 15 hours. I I spent closer to 25-ish, roughly just doing a lot of the side stuff because it was just fun and like I hadn't gotten burned out by the time I had played through it. Um, but it's nothing exciting. It's nothing super special at the end of the day either. Um, other other little things that I did want to talk about. Uh, I, I don't claim to be an expert on Assassin's Creed. Uh, my, my closest knowing of the earlier stuff, I've, I never finished the first one. Even to this day, I've been waiting for a remake to come out, and they're just not doing it yet. So I think I'm going to have to go back to 2006 and 2007 and just fucking play it. Um, but it it's does. It's not that fun anymore. Much. That's the thing. I, I it think really they, isn't. <laughs> they tried to their best to make it fun in a modern day setting or like a modern day video game of that setting. And I think it's fun, but it does still feel like an old game. Not necessarily in a bad way, but not necessarily in a great way. I think um, the the f- I have a lot of nostalgia for this for the first and the second Assassin's Creed. But if someone made me play them again, I think I would probably end up hating. I still love the second one, and I, I would probably still play it today and love it because I just I I do have so much nostalgia, and that's my first true Assassin's Creed I beat, and that's what got me into the series. But even when I just see the climbing, the, huh, 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 <laughs> yeah. I go like, it's, I cannot do this. I it's don't definitely want to do basic. this. But it's still, I still love it. This game tries to its best and still lacks in some areas. Uh, there's definitely some pop pop in here and there. It's nothing crazy by any means, but it is noticeable. You know, trees here and there, walking around a corner, people popping up. Um overall i'd say it's a good looking game uh it has so much sand so much fucking sand at one point so they do give you the option to in the visual settings to increase the sand i wish (laughs) they you're able to put a filter on the game to make it look like assassin's creed did in 2007 it has like this blue tint filter and at at about a third of the way in i put it on and i left it for the rest of the game and you know, I had a, I, I enjoyed it. It did make it feel more classic in in that way, and it definitely helped with all the yellow that I've and orange that I've seen from the rest of the sand of all year. I mean, there's, it is tough though, right? Because like they do with these games, try to like keep some accuracy to stuff, mm-hmm. and like that's probably how it was, yeah, at the time. But that doesn't necessarily make for an exciting no uh setting for a video game it doesn't and it's it's a hard thing to balance i think making the map as small as it is was good because getting through the big sandy areas there's enough of fast travel points and on your camel it really doesn't take too too long to travel pretty far but it to look at it does get old Mm -hmm. it does the game did crash on me once not terrible But it did happen. And I think my biggest thing with a lot of games, especially RPGs and stuff like this, that is just kind of annoying. 
is a lot of it feels so recycled, but at the same time, things are removed and like they could have added something more fun. Like how I, I, I love side stuff that feels more immersive in games, both Orlog in Valhalla and um, Farkle in Kingdom Come Deliverance. I just loved sitting down and playing those, like even playing poker in Red Dead Redemption or Gwent. GTA. Gwent is a great one too. But like Cyberpunk doesn't have anything like that. It's a big RPG. Um, this this game doesn't. It it could have recycled something, could like like a different version or had their own cute little game. But like I love those things. I think they're a lot of fun and they do add to the world building, at least in in my opinion, because it takes away from the whole scope of it and centralizes it on something so cute and small that can just take up so much of your time. It's like when a Yakuza game doesn't have karaoke. What are you doing? What are you going to do? It's... And it's funny because some of the little items that you can like sell or just get rid of are these little junk dice and like little game pieces. And I'm like, where's the game? I want to play a game. I want to play something fun and cute. But I think besides that, at the end of the day, it's it it's it's a passing game. I think it's a good old seven. There's nothing amazing about it, but it's nothing terrible. It's it does everything it tries to do. It doesn't it it falls back on some pretty annoying cliches and doesn't really have anything amazing even in terms of narrative and writing, but you know it it's it it landed. I mean, that's pretty much exactly what I would expect from Ubisoft at this point. I mean, for it to also be a game that does run pretty decently well in a, in a year of games, which can and can't be an argument for for some people, but it does work some better than some other ones that have released this year. Yeah. Currently, City Skylines too. So, all those teeth. Teeth. What That's time? why. City Skylines 2 isn't running properly because they have modeled teeth in every single one of the people and it is taking up so much of rendering. They modeled the teeth way too well. It's just insane so. that they don't meet their own standards and still decide to to publish. But yeah, you know, that's the scale that's this year in a they, nutshell, basically. Clearly so. the game was developed by dentists. Yes. Mm -hmm. They they met their I mean, it's a city builder. It, of course, it was made by dentists. Of course, collector's Every, edition comes with the toothpaste. The <laughs> Strawberry toothpaste. Who wants to talk about some notable game releases and look into the future with me? Well, thank Whoa. you, Dave, for that review. Thank you, talking Lyle, about for that comment. Rush. You're well, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Lyle, for thanking Dave. Dylan, I appreciate what you just did for Lyle. <laughs> My circle jerk of compliments. <laughs> <laughs> Starting, most importantly, as you've heard last week, on November 2nd, the day this episode releases, I myself am probably going to be busy playing RoboCop Rogue City on November 2nd, 2023, currently coming out on the PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. I cannot wait to play that game with my He's, hand. He means that. I just want everyone to know that he, he means that. He's very passionate about this. Yes, he is. Dead or alive, I, you're coming with me. I cannot wait for the review episode. I would right. buy this game for a dollar. November 2nd? I mean, a lot of people would probably. Um... What, what what it's a what? reference to the movie they say that in the movies i I'd buy that I'm for sorry. a dollar i it's get it okay. no i'm, I'm, it's I'm sorry i've never seen the that. 2014 yeah, joel kinnaman yeah. reboot it's okay i like joel kinnaman but like i you you really get the iconic performance from the from the earlier the originals on november 2nd we have thirsty suitors coming for ps4 and 5 nintendo switch xbox one the xbox series and pc nothing can yeah. truly really beat when he wins the pistol and throws it back in his leg because that's it's the most iconic part of it i'm really I'm looking forward for thirsty suitors me too i i like uh scott pilgrim 
So yeah, I think I will like this too. Looks like the right type of crazy. Yes, the right type of crazy where it's not cringe like they're yeah. trying too hard. It just it it it's it seems fun. Strange. Yes, just fun. I want to play this one. Also, on November 2nd, you can do the other two, because I have no idea what that is. Uh, for the King 2, coming for the PC. I played the first one. It's really fun. Rogue light D&D fantasy. It's not D&D, but it, but it uses those tropes, and it's very fun. So the second one for that is coming too. On the next day, November 3rd. Don't curse, Dylan. <laughs> Whoa. Stop. Stop no. it. Stop, Stop it. it. Stop it. We sell a wine from Chronic Cellars, and they all have to have funny names. And and the one is Sofa, like a couch, King, like royalty, and then Bueno. <laughs> so it's Chronic Cellars, So Fucking Bueno. That's pretty good. But it's Sofa King Bueno. I like that. Yeah. There you have it. So on November 3rd, uh, Quantum Error comes out for PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X. Um, I saw it for the first time before. I watched the trailer and I skipped through it with no audio. And to me, it looks like if you were to take um, Ethan Hawke and Troy Baker and uh, Roger Clark and have them have a baby, and then that baby became a firefighter and ran around in an FPS and it was it was a very narrative game. And there was aliens and he's a firefighter. And I don't know why he's a firefighter. <laughs> and apparently it's a trilogy. This is the start of a trilogy, it said in the trailer. I don't know, man. He's a firefighter. All right. Speaking of firefighters, we got WarioWare Move It. Coming out also on November 3rd to the Switch. Fire! Those games are fun. What is that? Is you that could like, have said those dance? games are fire. I Well, I don't know if I would collectively call all of the games fire. They Some have of the them sauce. are fire. They have the sauce. They are, um, the... It's like Just Dance, but with Mario characters. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I can see where you get that from with the move it. It's yeah, a stocking bag... game. It's a freight game. These go what? back to the uh... <laughs> packing out boxes, moving it. He's moving one box from here to there. Oh, so it's like no, moving out. No, no yeah. it's not. It's not. It's it's not at all. It, it's it is Wario and friends, but they're not the Mario characters. They're other characters just set in the WarioWare land. Is and it Ezio? No, they're they are just WarioWare characters. Oh, nowhere else to be seen. And is one of them named? What kind of game is this? I'm so it, invested it is, now. It is. It's. It's just. It's just like mini games. Like it's always mini, mini games. games. So like pa Mario Party. Um, it's like Mario Party. If the mini games in Mario Party were like five to ten seconds, and that's I don't like. like complete I don't it. like the mini game I just saw. Just, I don't like the mini game I just saw. Mini game, da -da -da, and they're usually like gross or funky or like. Yeah, some dude hold two Joy Cons, stuck his hands in the air, and position them in a way for a nose to come down, and so he could swing his arms around inside of the nostrils and clear out all the boogers. That's not yep, good. That is, that's Wario <laughs> Wear. Okay. I just saw a fishing mini game where they pulled a hot dog out of the lake and it turned into uh, an octopus. Yep. I liked my Just Dance version better. Why is there a small man with his booty out in the palm of his hand? Yep, that's... This is... What the fuck this is, is this game? Wear. That's all of the Warrior Wears. It is great. It's so good. All Wait right. a minute. Why did Warrior Wear have an Animal Crossing digging minigame? Because Warrior Wear. Well, there's a minigame, so you're going to be happy. That That is what... Oh, I, I meant rhythm game. I said mini oh. by accident. So I, it's a, yeah. Yes, that's yes. a hair cutting mini game. There's all sorts of uh, all sorts of them. The Invincible is coming on <laughs> November sixth for the PS5, PC, and the Xbox Series. So, yay! <laughs> I, think I, I like that. this one. I that's, like sci-fi shit. So, oh, right. I have no idea. I've only I played the demo. I think in spring, Invincible and I really liked it. Game book. 
It could be. It could very well yes. be. It's a game based on a 1964 sci-fi novel. 1964 From Stanislaw novel. Lem. Maybe I'll, cool. re- I'll read it after I uh, play the game. I don't want to spoil myself. So. Metro is no. based off a book. That's what true. Was? Metro. Metro. Yes. Yes. We've done it. Except they, the books and the games went on different timelines, and then it got confusing. I mean, Cyberpunk is a role-playing system. Yeah. So. That's correct. And they also all have different timelines. The Witcher? Those are books. That's true. What else we got? Harry Potter. No. Oh, well, yeah, those are books. (laughs) 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 Because the games are all... At least classically so based on the movies. <laughs> okay. Like I was thinking of the, the games based on the movies. I was like <laughs> But I guess most, those are based on books. The most famous book series in the world. No. <laughs> I'm don't worry, I'm not even gonna mention Lord of the Rings because I know that's not books. No, of course not. That's just that's <laughs> just games. That's just Shadow of Moro. That's just all based on that. No, it's all based on Gollum, right? It's, uh, it's all based on, yeah, Gollum, and then they made a, a, a fucked up spider creature into an attractive lady. Yep. I mean, that's what game studios do. Yep, exactly. Yes, it is. <laughs> I mean, every every Lovecraft game is based on the writing, so... The Sunken City, Dredge, all of that stuff. It's based on We played books. We got, check, check this shit out. What? Check this shit out for yes. video people. Look Show at, me. Look at, look at this. Look at this. Yeah, Missions of Madness! Woo! Just played this for the first time the other day. It's this, so good. It's very good. It's very fun. It's cool. They use, like, an app and shit. Mm-hmm. It's like you're playing your own little... Horror Lovecraftian D and D thing, but that. with the with the with the the game is the DM. That sounds cool. Yeah, it is. There's a lot of campaigns. Terra. Oh, only 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 four come with the board game. And yeah. You gotta either buy pay. expansions or pay for campaigns. Yeah. But they do let like I, I saw like they were they were like five dollars, the ones you could buy in the app, and they last for like four hours or some shit it's not bad all right those were all the games right yeah those were all the games those were all the games games dylan games. yeah clock, clock us here. out well we gotta say goodbye first yeah that's what i bet oh goodbye <laughs>